Hello, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, episode 132. Uh, in my world of plants, it's the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after leaving the YMCA. Uh, my fiance has moved into the house. She's moved in plants. So many plants. This video is going to be like the plant show soon. They're everywhere. H how do plants take up so much space? If you know the answer, put it in the comments. Anyway, the last thing that I reviewed, well, last thing I seriously reviewed, I did a little quick two-minute episode that I hope you didn't watch because it wasn't very good. Um, the last major review I did was on a black metal album, you know, called Des Paysé with songs like Face Down and The Blood and Piss. And I made the argument that you need to keep a space in your heart for, like, songs of decay and, and Satan and darkness and cruelty and despair. Today, I'm going to be reviewing... Juan Wouters. I don't know how you pronounce that. It's W-A-U-T-E-R-S. I guess he probably just says Waters for simplicity's sake. And his album, Introducing Juan Pablo. And I think you need space in your heart for darkness and decay. But I also think you need a space in your heart for childlike joy. Which is how this album makes me feel. Um, I'll give a brief description of what it is. Apparently, the brief bio I read on title, uh, this is like a guy who moved from Uruguay uh, to join his father in New York City and he worked in a factory and then he just discovered like making music. And the music itself is very simple. I mean, for the most part, it's just an acoustic guitar, sometimes very simple bass, sometimes very simple drums. Occasionally, he'll have a guest singer. I'll get to that soon. Um, and then the lyrics are very simple and sung with, either they're sung in Spanish, and if you don't speak Spanish well, this is a great album, because I'm like intermediate Spanish and I understood all of it. Well, most of it, some of it. The important parts I understood. Um, and then, but when he sings in English, he has this kind of like, I suppose, Uruguayan, Uruguay-esque? Ur Ur Uruguayan, Uruguayan? Uruguayan accent. <laughs> if you know how to say what kind of accent someone from Uruguay has, put that in the comments as well. Um, and it's this amazing album because, I mean, I said childlike, you know, and that seems really patronizing because a lot of the themes on this album aren't like particularly childlike. A lot of the themes are about going to another country and feeling alone and, and love where you love somebody from a distance and the pain that you feel and the loneliness that you feel when you're trying to go out. You know, it's not like, he's not singing about like, you know, golly, I like cows because cows go moo. Um, but there's a simplicity to the music. And then mixed in with the way that he sings, the only thing I can say is that I found myself caring for this singer. Okay, I just listened to it once, half an hour, on the elliptical, at the YMCA, you know, next to the suburban moms and the suburban dads and the suburban great-great-great-great-grandfathers. Um, but, like, I found myself, like, feeling, like, a tenderness towards this singer. And that's, you know, I don't feel that very often. But there's, uh, he sings about his life in such a direct way that it almost feels sort of like outsider music, if that makes sense. You know, like somebody who, who doesn't spend his whole life thinking about what kind of influences does he want to show, and he really wants to, to connect to this and connect to that and show his love and mastery of this, more just like this guy who has a guitar and sings. And so that's what brings me to what this album reminds me of the most. And this is out of left field, and I'm sorry I'm going to alienate most of my audience, but I, I, I basically am my audience. I mean, there's 200 of you, over 200 of you. So, hey, I love you. But uh, if you love me, it's because I do things like this. The person who Juan Waters reminds me most of is the singing nun, Sœur Sourire. If you don't know about her, she's this amazing artist. She was Belgian and she sang in French and she just like found a guitar in a shop and learned to play it. And she sang all these sort of religious songs. She had a very interesting life. Turns out she was a lesbian and died a drug addict. Amazing story. Um, but when she started out, she would sing these songs with this innocence and this clarity to her music. And it was the same feeling. Like she was trying to communicate something through music, but she was not music herself. She was not some kind of 
next in the line of people who do this thing. And in the same way, I feel that about Juan Waters. I, by the way, I really enjoyed this album, like a lot. Like, I, I don't know, like I'm looking forward to playing it right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play you the first song. Okay, now the first song is this like conversation between, I think it's probably him and his mom or something. And it's about like, you gotta close the window or else water will get in. And it talks about him going to Paris. And it's like in English and in Spanish. And it reminds me of when I've been in bilingual homes or heritage speaker homes where, you know, maybe the kid grew up mostly in America and then the, the parents grew up in another speaking country. And this sort of mixture of languages it has a real sort of authentico feel to it um, that I think is he was trying to set up in the album. So the first track is called Doing All Right. And it has, it's a very typical song for him in the way it's very simple guitars, uh, doubled vocals, you know, so he'll, he'll double himself over. Later, he actually doubles himself and does interesting things like putting on, you know, sort of like a different line, but for the most part, it's note for note doubling. Um, and it's this really nice song about how he should be doing well. It doesn't seem like he necessarily is. So it's not a song like, don't worry, be happy. It's more like, I probably shouldn't worry. I probably could be happy but it's unclear if he is. Uh, and, and truly, I mean, if you hear this and you like it, like just listen to this guy's stuff. Like turn off my video and go listen to this guy's stuff. Uh, Cause it'll like make your day better. All right, here we go. Doing All Right by Juan Wouters. It is gonna play eventually. Yesterday. You know, nice little accordion in the background. Bang again. Very simple. Most of it isn't that reggae beat. But I mean, do you hear that? Do you hear the intimacy and the closeness that you feel and that slight accent and, and the way that he sings? The next track after that is this beautiful track all in Spanish called Rubia, which is, I, I assume, a song about him being in love with a redhead while he is, I believe, I believe, in France. And he misses her and he's writing back to her but he's like still drinking a lot and smoking a lot, but he misses her and thinks about her. That's my interpretation based on my limited Spanish. And that's also exactly my life in 2000. Like in the year 2000, I was living in France, drinking too much pastis, smoking too many cigarettes, and uh, longing for a redhead. So I'm probably projecting, but, but I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure my Spanish is good enough to be correct about that. So here we'll uh, listen to that a little bit here. And that's the, that's the track in which he uses the Spanish word for heart, corazón. And it's always my joke that every Spanish song has the word corazón in it. And I'm usually right. Um, okay, this is just a whole separate skyness, unsubscribe thought. Is there a chance that music in Spanish is more romantic because the word for heart is so good in Spanish? Corazón? I mean, in English, my heart. Oh. Or in French, cœur. But corazón, what a word. I think there's a chance, there's a kind of linguistic determinism that went into Spanish-speaking music, that it has to be about love. You have to sing about your corazón because the word is such a great word. Okay, spoiler. That's probably... You know what? That's not racist. That's not racist. There's nothing wrong with me saying that. Okay. Sorry. I'm just, I'm just riffing. Okay. Uh, and then the next track. So these, these first three tracks, I would say, are a great example of what you can really listen to and enjoy. Uh, it's called Letter. And this is a little bit more upbeat. It's almost like a Buddy Holly-ish rock track. Uh, it has a really nice uh, lead guitar line halfway in it. So I'll play a little bit of Letter. Um... 
You know, I mean, I guess it's lo-fi, but it doesn't feel like it's trying to be lo-fi. And this is great because this song is at ding. Um, uh, this song is actually mixed in with. I mean, there's another version of the song that comes later where a female singer sings along with him, and the sort of guitar line that do 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 then becomes vocal. And it's kind of fun to imagine like which version of the song is better. Um, that same singer would go on to sing another track called Crazy Funny, um, and that's an amazing song about feeling stupid. And I felt stupid most of my life. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky, you know, I, went to, I, I got to go to college and once I went to college, I started to feel smart. Um, so about half my life, half my life, I was just pretty much convinced I was stupid. And uh, the song is about like other people graduating and him being held back and him being held back because he didn't care when he was younger. And I don't know, you know, like my son, is, he's wicked smart, but uh, he, you know, the divorce, was happening when he was young and like he couldn't focus in school and like he ended up getting on this track that is like the not smartest of the smart track and ever since he's been trying to fight it and get back on the smartest of the smart track and same thing with me like I was just dumb I just didn't care and then like you know it took a long way to get up to a point where I felt smart so this guy I'm sure he's smart but this whole song is like other people are graduating and he just feels dumb and, and again, I, I love music, I love lyrics that express something that I've never felt expressed before. I don't know of any other song about feeling stupid because of youthful indifference. Okay? Challenge me. I mean, I challenge you. Where is this out there in other music? It's just wonderful. Another track I really love is called El Hombre de la Calle, which is actually all in English, but it's this weirdly charming song about being a man on the street, and it feels like it was written by aliens. Like, he doesn't, I mean, he speaks English perfectly fine, but the song was composed like someone who doesn't quite know, almost like a Swedish pop singer who, you know, sings in English, and like, like their choice of words is a little bit weird. You know, it's like, you know, stay away from me, man, stay away from me, woman. It's just a great song. So there it is. There, there's my, my review of Juan Waters, uh, Wouters, uh, introduction, uh, introducing Juan Pablo. Excellent album. If I have to give it a three word review, which I really need to think of these before I start recording. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna say I care for him. I think that's a good review. And I think you will too. And I think we need music which promotes that kind of warmth and simplicity. All right, till next time, there's the camera.